All right, so you're trying to get into shooting more lifestyle content or maybe you already shoot lifestyle and you're just trying to figure out some ways that you could turn your work up a bit. I'm gonna give you guys five tips. Uh, and like the title says, I don't really wanna hold y'all. So let's get straight to it. So first things first, you wanna make sure that you understand your client's expectations. Uh, this is gonna come with asking them questions, asking them what they're shooting for, what are they purposing the images for? Are they using them for social media? Are they using them for their website? Maybe it's for e-commerce. Maybe it's strictly for advertising. Uh, all of these things are gonna come into account to make sure that you're taking the correct type of images for them. So you wanna make sure that you are crispy clear on what the expectations are going into the shoot. Now, not to say that you're limited to only doing that, but you wanna make sure that you're checking all the boxes for your client first, and then you can add in all the creative work and anything that you wanna do outside of that afterwards. The last thing that you want to happen is that you produce hundreds of images for this client and only to come to find out that that's not really what the client was going for at the end of your shoot. So with that being said, make sure that you prepare for your shoot, make sure you do the proper planning, make sure you do research, make sure that you know what your client needs before you even take your first shot. Next, I wanna talk about choosing the location that is cohesive with the style that you are shooting. So for example, let's say if you're shooting fitness, first thing that probably comes to mind is shooting in a gym. Now, that's definitely in line with shooting fitness, but then you can kind of branch off into other avenues. So maybe this is more of a lifestyle shoot, and within that you have stuff that's like athleisure, athletic wear that's not necessarily as intense as having to be in a gym. So this is where your creativity gets to come in. So I like to try to think outside of the box, but still try to keep things in the realm of what I'm doing. So for my fitness shoots, I like to use areas that are a little bit industrial, maybe a little rugged, a little gritty, just to add some contrast to the elements and add some texture to what's going on in the image. I'm a huge fan of using these concrete washes. We have quite a few of them around Vegas. I feel like they always enhance the feel of fitness images, plus they allow your subject to stand out while still giving you some texture in the background. So as you can see here, our subject plus our lighting and the skin tones and the clothing stands out on top of these concrete walls. So it's a very clean look, but it also plays to the feel of fitness. Now, what I mean in making sure that your location is cohesive with the style of photography is you wouldn't do a family shoot in a gritty industrial style type area. It just wouldn't make sense, right? You're not gonna do business headshots in an alleyway or something that's more rugged and, and gritty. It just, those things don't make sense. So you wanna make sure that what you're shooting makes sense where you're shooting. You wanna take into consideration your foreground, your subject, and your background when you're shooting. Next on the list is lighting. You wanna make sure that the lighting that you're utilizing supports the types of shots that you're trying to get. So that being said, even if you're shooting in natural light, there's ways that you can use the natural light that support the shots that you get. Now, if you're using the sun as your key light, you wanna make sure that you're using the right time of day. Here, we're using just before golden hour. So it was the perfect lighting at the perfect angle at the perfect time. Now, with using golden hour, it's going to saturate your image differently. So you have to take that into consideration. How do you want your colors to hit? What are you gonna do with your image in post? Here, for this shoot, we stuck with our natural lighting. We use the sun hitting directly on the subject, shooting with the angle of the sun so she's fully lit. Then I also shot 90 degrees to the light to give me side light, which gave me contrast and a little bit of shadowing on one side of my subject, which is always great for bringing out definition on your subject when you're shooting fitness. Great things to keep in mind. Move around when you're shooting. Check what works, check what doesn't. You may not want a backlight when you're shooting fitness, depending on the surrounding area and what's bouncing the light. If it's too dark, then you're not gonna be able to see any of the definition or anything on the physique, which is why they got in great shape for the photo shoot, and now you can't see it because you're shooting in the dark. So, 
Just keep that in mind, test your angles out, move your feet, don't get set in one spot too long and just produce a bunch of stale images. Move around, check your angles. We also moved to another area here where the walls were high enough to block the sunlight, which also works as well because now you're just working with ambient light, which gives you a pretty evenly lit image. Again, keeping in mind what you're gonna do with it in post. Sometimes when you're shooting with bounce ambient light, it can produce a flat image. So you have to make sure that you bring those highlights and shadows back in post to give your image dimension. The next gem is composition. And if you know me, you know I am a huge fan of a strong composition. Things that you wanna take into consideration when you're composing your shot, again, foreground, subject, background. So you wanna make sure that you are checking all those boxes when you're composing. You can also use the elements that are around you. At this location, they got some pretty dope elements that you can use that have these blocks that block the water off from rushing down too fast. They have railways, they have just the texture of the concrete, ladders, there's a few like cutouts and stuff like that that you can get into. So again, these are things that you want to look for when you're shooting. It, it's gonna make your shot a lot more interesting to look at when you're composing your shot and you're using these elements. But don't go OD. Don't think you gotta have your model just hanging off of some shit just to be hanging. I can't stand those images where the model just has to touch something because it's there. Like you don't always have to interact with everything that's around you. Sometimes you can just leave it in the background and let it just be visual. It does not have to be interacted with. At your discretion, of course, and it's for your image, right? So it's subjective. But make sure that you pay attention to your surroundings. Be aware of the things that you're able to utilize outside of just your subject standing in front of your camera. And last but not least, this one doesn't have anything to do with how you capture your shots, but more so on how you handle your client for the shot is make sure that you review the images with the client. This is how you avoid any mishaps or any miscommunications between the shots that you're capturing and again, back to the client's expectations. So by showing them the images that you're getting, which sometimes you cannot do if you're in a groove of shooting, I'm guilty of it and I shoot, 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 and think you're capturing that hot fire. And then just to come to find out like, they don't like this, they don't like that. And you can see it on their face and they're pretending like they like it and you can tell that they don't. So review the shots with your client as you go every so often. You don't wanna slow up the flow of the shoot, but you also wanna make sure that you're on the right path. So either show the subject the images or the client the images because the client may not be the person that's in the image and make sure that this is what they're going for. Make sure that you are hitting your marks with the shots that you're getting, that's the styles and the pose that they want and the lighting is good. If it's good, then proceed on with the shoot. If not, then go back and ask and communicate with the client. Ask them what it is that they want. If it's posing, then communicate that with the model so you guys can adjust the types of posing. If it's lighting, then on your end, you need to clarify what it is that they're trying to do. Nonetheless, keep the communication lines open with the client and make sure that you review your images with them as you go. Do not forget this tip because you will shoot a whole shoot and they'll not like that shit. And that's the worst because then you got to redo it all over on your dime. So like I said, I want to keep this straight and to the point. I don't like to hold you guys too long and do all the extra shit just to drag out the time. Uh, so hopefully you guys got something from this video. Hopefully there's some vital information that you guys can use for your next shoot go out, set up a shoot, or next time you get booked for it, keep these tips in mind, write them down, do whatever you gotta do to remember them. Uh, and, and as always, share your images with me. I'd love to check out y'all work. Drop your Instagrams down in the comments down there so I could check out your page. Follow me on Instagram at Tay Price if you're not already. I'm on TikTok too. Uh, oh yeah, shameless plug. Don't forget, send deposit. You check that out, senddeposit.com, get yours, let them know that you mean business, stop playing with you, stop playing with your time, stop playing with your money, you know what I'm saying? Tell them send that, send the whole thing if they got it like that. Nah, but thank you guys for tuning back in. I know it's been a minute since I dropped one. I'm getting back on the wagon again. We're gonna try to keep consistent with it. I do a lot, I'm trying to work on the time management and get a decent content schedule going. 
which I will speak on too. I can actually probably put that in a video for y'all. If y'all want, let me know. Um, but yeah, I think that's everything. I think we got it. I think we hit it on the head. Oh yeah, smash that like button if any of the information in this video helps you. And don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And if you are subscribed, make sure you turn on the notifications so you catch the next one. I promise it'll be sooner than later.